Hello, my name is Yuval Yarom, and today I'll try to convince you that cryptographic code offers special opportunities for genetic improvement. This is work done with Chichenok Junsantianza and Marcos Wagner from the University of Adelaide. I'll first uh, explain why we care. I'll then uh, proceed to convince to explain why cryptographic code is a uh, especially suitable for genetic improvement. And I'll conclude with uh, some initial experiments that we have done in this space. So society is built on data. We need to keep track of, we have data and keep track of it, and it has to be private. In the past, our data uh, was held in uh, different mediums that were not connected to each other. So. We had uh, our accounting books and we have our phone, but they were not shared. They were not in the same device and it was hard to copy data from one to another. This has all changed in the recent, in the last 20 years when we have moved to have devices that store all of our data. Not only they store all of our data, they also communicate it all over the, uh, the world. And we need to protect it. And one of the main tools that protect this data is cryptography. So uh, every byte of data that we send is encrypted typically multiple times. Now, cryptographic code need to fulfill two main uh, requirements. It has to be secure and it has to be efficient. Uh, secure because if it is not, then it does not fulfill its uh, it's its purpose and efficient because otherwise it, it will be too costly to maintain to encrypt everything. So what does it mean to be secure? For example, we want the code to be provably correct. So we want to uh, be able to show that the code uh, performed the function it is supposed to. We also want the code to be leak free. And I'll talk about this in a few seconds and more. These requirements mean that uh, to programs cryptographic code, we need to have high level of expertise. Uh, for efficiency, because we want the code to be efficient, high, perf uh, high performance, then code is typically hand-tuned. It includes techniques such as loop and rolling and other optimization techniques. And it is in many cases written in assembly, again, requiring high expertise. And unfortunately, expertise comes with a price. So let us now look at what, what we mean by leak free. Our main thread that we are looking at in, in this talk is microarchitectural side channels. Uh, in a nutshell, the processor contains multiple components that uh, aim at uh, improving the performance of the code that runs it. For example, we have a cache. And the program history, when the program runs, it affects the cache. So data is stored in the cache depending on what the program accesses. And at the same time, the, the cache affects the execution time of the program because if data is cached, access to it is much faster. In a, micro, in a side channel attack, what we do is we reverse the uh, process. We measure the execution time of a program. And from that, we learn what, is, what happens in the cache. And from that, we can infer data about what happened in other programs that run on our computer. And this has been a known threat for the past uh, two decades. And the main technique that we use against such microarchitectural side channels is constant time programming. That's a programming paradigm that aims to protect against microarchitectural side channels. And it what it basically does is control the flow of secrets. So in, to, for a problem to be constant time, we need to ensure that there is no flow of secret into branch conditions no flow of secrets to memory addresses. So you cannot access an array at an offset that depends on a secret. And that uh, instructions that have variable uh, time depending on the arguments do not have secret uh, uh, arguments. And this has been developed over the, again, the past uh, two decades, and it can currently consider the factor requirement for cryptographic code. These same requirements also present us with an opportunity. Um, if our code is leak free, it's constant time code, it doesn't have branches that depend on secret, it doesn't have memory accesses that depend on secret, and it has these loops and roll. What that means is that we have large basic blocks because uh, just 
we have less branches, we have data unrolled, we don't have even uh, intricate memory access patterns. So we have large sequences of instructions that basically process data and do nothing beyond that. And large basic flow logs are a problem for mainstream compilers because they are not typical in most programs. They, are, they exist, they're typical in cryptographic code, but not in uh, other programs. And most compilers are not op designed to optimize cryptographic code. At the same time, because our code in these basic blocks is much simpler, this presents opportunity this is for, for combinatorial search. We have much less conditions that we need to worry when we apply mut mutations. So exploiting these observations, these observations, we designed Cryptopt. And Cryptopt in a nutshell, it is a search-based code generator. Uh, we currently tested it on finite field operations. So we do with it arithmetic modulo 255 uh, minus 19, which is common in elliptic curves or other, and or we can work with other fields as well. The input to Corruptopt is a basic block in intermediate representation. So it's a low level language uh, that basically uh, it is a sequence of instructions and uh, in SSA format, we can get this code from either from Fiat Cryptography, which is a project published in uh, ITER Police Security and Privacy 2019 that uh, generate code for finite field operations or we can just compile some code with LLVM and extract the intermediate representation of basic blocks. And what we output is x86 assembly, and we make sure that this x86 assembly is uh, efficient by using random local search. So as an example, we have here code of a function that does three additions and two multiplication to calculate some function. Because we have no branches here, because we have no uh, mem intricate memory accesses, all the data dependencies are captured by the instructions. So we have a very uh, data dependency graph, which basically limits our uh, instruction ordering. Any topological sorting of this data dependency graph will compute the correct function. So what we do, we start with some ordering of these operations, we create code based on this. And now we apply two types of mutations. We either permute the operations in agreement with our uh, data flow graph, or we replace the implementation of an operation with different instructions, just because the architecture has multiple instructions that implement uh, each operation. And we test the performance of the mutated code. And if it's better than the performance of the code before the mutation, we keep the uh, mutated code. If not, we uh, revert to the original code and repeat this along many, for many times. Um, Crypto uses what, what's called the best bet and run strategy. So uh, we allocate some of the budget of our mutations to a bet st a stage where we run multiple uh, optimization. Each of them gives us different result. When we uh, finish this budget, we're in for some time, each of these uh, random searches, we pick the best one and continue to try to improve it for the rest of our budget. Overall, uh, Crypto uh, gives us relatively good results. So if we look at, look at Curve 25519, which is one of the most commonly used in a uh, cryptographic uh, scheme today, uh, it gives us between 16 and 25% over uh, mainstream compilers. For other curves, we can get up to uh, two and a half times faster. Uh, downside, we have some curves that uh, are not as efficient. So curve 448, we, we lose uh, almost 20% compared to GCC. We don't know what the reason for that is. Fortunately, curve 448 is not used, it's not commonly used. So we lose on something that no one really cares about. Another advantage that we have from, uh, from crypto is that if we started with uh, Fiat Crypto, Fiat Crypto proves that the IR is a uh, Correct, so it performs the function, the mathematical function that is expected. With crypto, we can now uh, ensure, uh, we have a proof that the uh, code that we produce is equivalent to the IR, therefore we extend the correctness proof down to the assembly code, which did, we did not have prior to crypto. So in summary, uh, we discussed the cryptographic code tend to have large basic blocks. 
And these basic blocks uh, are what makes it a particularly suitable for combinatorial research, just because they are first long, which makes them uh, unsuitable for traditional compilers. And they are simple, which makes it easy to mutate and maintain the uh, correctness. So we built crypto that uses really random local search to optimize for a basic block in finite field for finite field operations. We get relatively good results. And uh, one of the main claims that we have is that uh, there are many more uh, low hanging fruits in this space. So we um, uh, encourage anyone who is looking for an interesting project to, uh, to try uh, optimizing cryptographic code. Thank you for listening, and I'll uh, now be happy to take questions.